tonight uh, in the presence of God. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to say praise the Lord uh, and welcome, hallelujah, everyone, uh, hallelujah, to Calvary Ministry International for our midday manna. On the behalf of our pastor, Supplicant Bishop C. Sean Tyson, hallelujah, we want to say thank you and join us. Uh, we thank you for coming in. Uh, hallelujah. I am Evangelist Monica Armour. Let me calm myself down. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> I am Evangelist Monica Armour, and we would like for you to invite someone by hitting that share button. Hallelujah. We want you to hit that share button and hallelujah and invite your friends. Invite your family. Invite your community. Let them know where you're at right now. You're in the presence of the Lord when you hallelujah. When you came in, you come into the presence of the Lord. So we do say thank you for entering in into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read our uh, announcements at this time. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. We like to you for you to govern yourself unto the announcement. It says we're coming to pray for all the bereaved. We're continually to pray, sorry, for all the bereaved families, yes. including the family of Brother Tom March in his transition. Yes. Today's Noonday Bible class will be replayed on the YouTube channel at 7 o'clock p.m. The Ohio District Council began yesterday, which continued through Saturday, July 1st, at Hollow Hills Campground, Zanesville, Ohio. The ODC participants Minister Nathan Brantley, amen. Let's give God a hand, praise for Nathan. <laughs> Hallelujah, Minister Nathan Brantley will be preaching. Hallelujah. And Sister Therese Levels and Dr. Longmar will be teaching at Christian Education. Hallelujah. The department, uh, Elder Craig and Sister Gwen Quinn Gilcrest will be receiving Transformational Leadership Award as well as First Lady Krista Tyson teaching at the ODC prayer, hallelujah, breakfast on Thursday, June 29th, 8.30, amen. Let's give them a hand praise. Amen. We thank God, hallelujah, for the participation, hallelujah, and how God is blessing Calvary, amen, amen. Thursday, it says June the 29th will be saturation prayer and exhortation from 6 to 7 p.m. We want to remember that. Hallelujah. Friday, June 30th, Celebrate Recovery will convene from 6 to 7.30 p.m. We're still giving. We're still giving toward the paying off the Faith in Action debt campaign. Our upcoming events, our upcoming events, and we'd like you to hear our upcoming event. The PAW Annual Summer Convention dates will, will begin July 16 through July 22, 2023 in St. Louis, Missouri. Our pastor will be elevated mm, to bishop in the Thursday consecration service. And we want to be there. I said we want to be there. Hallelujah. We thank God for the elevation. The celebrated recovery staff will observe a special time of recognition and accomplishment Sunday, July 30th, as part of the 10 a.m. 10, 10 a.m. service. All are invited. Amen. Amen. Reminder: The African American Wellness Mail Walk is well upon is well upon us health and wellness team in collaboration with A1 Brothers. You can register for attendance as well as purchase a t-shirt shirt, and get information regarding the walk in the foyer. This event is Saturday, August 5th at the Cavelli Center starting at 7 a.m. We want to remember that. 
reminder, reminder, hallelujah. It's a reminder they've given us, hallelujah. The seekers gathering, amen, hallelujah. 2023, September the 21st through September the 23rd, under the leadership of First Lady Krista Tyson. Register by going online to Calvary4, the number 4U.org website. There will be a pre-seeker service Thursday, July 6th at 6 p.m. with special guests joining us. Amen. And we like to govern ourselves to all of the announcements. And if you are a God seeker, yes. you want a closer walk with God, hallelujah, and you're yes. seeking the face of God, we asking you to join us once again at the God Seekers Conference. Amen. And that will be September the 21st through September the 23rd. We would like to see you here. Huh? I said we would like to see you here coming from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Hallelujah. Come and be with us because we are entering into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Our pastor is with us right now. Hallelujah. The elect bishop. Sub, the elect bishop, C. Sean Tyson. Let's greet him by saying, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Minister Armand. Praise the Lord to everyone. With an invitation like that, I think I'd come to Youngstown. God bless you. Thank you, Saints. You may have your seats. Father, we thank you now for this hour. Thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to be in your house, the house of prayer unto all nations. Thank you for your abiding presence, your glory that is here, your power that is here, your healing and your strength, your renewal and your restoration. Lord, we never want to take your presence for granted. We value you above all things. And we thank you for this house of habitation yes, where men, women, boys, and girls can come and experience the reality of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Father, here we are to consider the mind of God yes, as revealed in your word. Yes, I pray that you would unction us Hallelujah. with a touch from heaven. Yes, May the mind of God be clearly revealed. And I pray that you would give us an ear to hear yes, what the Spirit is saying to the church, yes, not just in Youngstown, but the church worldwide. Yes. Lord, bless the councils that are assembling at this time, yes. where the saints of God are gathering to receive next instructions from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, we recognize that we cannot continue as we were but that God is now calling for a transformation of operations on every level. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would move upon our leaders, yes. Bishop Gators and now Bishop Fennell in Indiana. Yes. Bless Bishop Brooks. Bless the man of God. Keep him with continued health and strength. Render unto him divine supernatural vision insight concept understanding foresight for this organization that you have called by your name the pentecostal assemblies of the world lord we must be pentecostal in not only name but in deed signs must follow those that call themselves pentecostal and in the name of the lord jesus as you pour out your spirit upon all flesh include us in the outpour Make this an epicenter for the power of the Holy Ghost to resonate from Calvary around the world. Take the prayers of the saints that have been offered down through the years. May they come together in one spiritual force in a time of supernatural manifestation and transformation. Lord, use us for your glory. Use us for your praise, for your honor. Rid us of every self-obsession. In the Nasukabachetea, 
Oh God, we're too consumed with self. But in the name of Jesus, give us a heart for the needs of others. Give us a sensitivity to their pains and to their hurts, to their worries and to their concerns. Open our eyes so that we can see the hearts of men and women. Quicken our discernment in the name of Jesus so that we're not just interacting with people like mannequins. Let there be a spiritual connection. A spiritual connection in the name of Jesus. Make us aware of the pains of others and their hurts. Even, Lord, seeing beyond external comforts, uh, uh, fake smiles, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, heal inward hurts, uh, heal wounded spirits, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, let this be a season of restoration and reclamation of broken dreams and visions in the name of Jesus. Oh God, touch the sick today and bring them healing. While we're here praying now, heal all manner of sickness, infirmity, weakness, and disease. God, you're a cancer healer. Yes, no problem for you. Heal what the doctors have called incurable diseases. We believe that with God, all things are possible. Lord, we release the spirit of possibility into the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Touch your children, heal their bodies, heal their mind, heal their soul. I rebuke discouragement in the name of Jesus. We release hope today, hope in God. We're waiting on you, we're trusting in you. We're looking to you. We're expecting the best. We're looking for a turnaround. We're looking for a comeback and a come up in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you today. We'll praise you forever. You're a worthy God. You're great and greatly to be praised. You are one day in my soul. You are a good God all the time. And I praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. You are wonderful God. And we thank you. Thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for keeping Mother Joseph with us. Thank you. Praise your name. Thank you for foundation. Mm. Thank you for spiritual maturity. Thank you for all of the mothers and fathers in Calvary. Thank you that we're not a fly-by-night church. Glory to God. Thank you for balance. Thank you for correction. Thank you for the protection of the wisdom of the older saints. Give us the wisdom to take heed. Help us to listen. Help us to hear wise counsel. In the name of Jesus. Let your blood cover. Oh, Jesus. Subvert all of the tactics of the devil. Oh, Jesus. Give the church spiritual warfare strategy. Touch Bishop Clifton Jones right now. Right now, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Tatama satamo koshata. Hida masanda bahayana. Touch the bishop now. Thank you for all his prayers. Let them boomerang back to him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord bless Mother Brooks. Touch her memory. Thank you, Jesus. Short term and long term. In the name of Jesus. Just let it come back to her. Mm -hmm. One picture at a time. One name at a time. One number at a time. One image at a time. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise your name. Won't you lift your hands with me wherever you are. Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of the Lord now breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of the Lord now breathe on. Now you're going to have to learn how to praise the Lord without a praise team. You're going to have to learn how to praise the Lord in your house. Just like you're in God's house. And make your private space a place where God can come in and dwell with you. And minister to you and strengthen you. And pour himself into you. And that's what worship will do for your spirit, for your soul, your mind, and your body. I want to encourage you to play spiritual music in your home and to pray prayers. Let prayers resonate throughout your house, even while you're sleeping and resting and cleaning, washing dishes, washing clothes. Keep that atmosphere of life in your home. Remember to anoint the doorposts of the house every Monday. I haven't mentioned that in a while. But I want to encourage you to keep your house and family covered by the blood of the Lamb. Well, it's council week. And the Lord is blessing the saints to assemble themselves in Zanesville, Ohio on this week beginning tonight. And I am sure that all of us are proud that our son, Minister Nathan Bradley, is speaking tonight. Well, the Lord bless Minister Nathan and give him a double portion anointing. That God's hand will be upon him, that he will speak as God gives him utterance. I'm happy to see him being him and I want to see all of our young people be who they are as God has called and created them to be so we're just believing God's going to touch him and those of us who are not able to be there physically will be able to view that service at the Ohio District Council Facebook page and wherever you are I want to encourage you to be blessed by that worship experience tonight. That's the Hallowed Hills Campground, Zanesville, Ohio, 3129 
East Pike. So all of our viewers in that Zanesville area, why don't you come and worship with us in person? 3129 yes. East Pike, that's the Hallowed Hill Campground in Zanesville, Ohio, 7 p.m. tonight and every night this week. Amen. The Lord bless the newly consecrated bishop of the ABSA Council, the 4th Episcopal District of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. The great Bishop Charles Sims has moved into emeritus status and now the pastor of the Mother Church, the Honorable Bishop Charles Fennell, is now the diocesan bishop of the ABSA Council, ABSA Apostolic Bible Students Association, the Indiana Council, where my father served as bishop for 37 years. And now the Honorable Bishop Charles Fennell has come to lead God's people in Indiana. And tonight at 7 p.m., Zion Tabernacle, 4007 North Sherman Drive in Indianapolis. Yes. Pastor James Tyson will be delivering the message on tonight at 7 o'clock at Zion Tabernacle. Yes. Certainly, we're looking for all the Christ Church family, all pastors, all deacons, all ministers, and the entire Christ Church family. Yes. Tonight at 7 o'clock, I want you to be there to pray for the pastor, to support him, to create an atmosphere of worship and praise Amen. so that when he takes the floor to minister the word of God, Hallelujah. the atmosphere will already be conditioned yes. for what God will do. Yes. Meet Pastor Tyson at 7 o'clock tonight at Zion Tabernacle 4007 North Sherman Drive in Indianapolis. Yes, yes, yes. Consider these words in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 14. Well, we have two Calvary sons speaking to two councils tonight, yes. and that's not a coincidence. No. That's the favor of God. That's the power of being in the right place at the right time. Amen. That's the blessing of growing up in a good church. Amen. I'm going to say amen to that. Amen. Second Kings chapter 5 and verse number 14. Let me pray a prayer real quick. Lord, bless the multi-purpose room with the air conditioner. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> You don't have to be long to be strong. <laughs> I hope all the deacons heard me pray that prayer. I'm in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 14. If you have it, can you say amen? amen. I want to wish Mama D, also known as Minister Daffy, a happy birthday on today. And the best year you've ever had. Amen. Second Kings 5 and 14. Let's read it together please family. Then went he down. And dipped himself seven times in Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh. Help me say muddy miracle. Our text today is one of the most insightful in all of the scriptures into the mind of God as it pertains to the manifestation of miracles. I want to give a disclaimer before I go any further and let all of the viewing audience know that I believe in miracles. 100%. Everybody doesn't believe in miracles. They don't have faith for that dimension 
of the experiences of the power of God. I pray today that this lesson will increase your faith because we serve the God of miracles. And most of us in the room, if you asked us, we would tell you, I am a miracle. The fact that many of us are still alive in the land of the living, in some semblance of a sound mind, some measure of health and strength, is a miracle in and of itself. So then, in this class today, we have those who know experientially, we have those who know pneumatologically, that Jesus Christ is the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Look at Psalm 77 and verse 14 in your Bible. Psalm 77 and 14, and wherever you're watching, whether it's live now or at 7 p.m., I want you to share this Bible study with all your social media friends. God wants to bless them. Mm -hmm. Psalm 77, verse 14. Do you have it? Yeah. All right, saints. Let's read it together aloud, please, everyone. Thou art the God. Yes. Thou hast declared thy strength. The word wonders is the Hebrew word pele. P-E-L-E. Pele. And it means, number one, a miracle. Number two, the word Pele means a marvelous thing. Number three, the word wonders, Pele, means an extraordinarily hard to understand thing. Thou art the God that does miracles. Thou art the God that does marvelous things thou art the God that does things extraordinarily hard to understand thou hast declared thy strength among the people in other words God said what he was going to do and then he does it friend you can trust God's track record. His word never returns unto him void. Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Isaiah 55 and 11, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. The word is working on your situation while you're worshiping right now. It shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Thank you, Jesus. Just right where you're sitting, here or at home, just lift your hand and say, Lord, send me a word. For some of us, that's all we need. What I'd like to highlight today is that our God not only has the power to work miracles, but what I think many people fail to understand is that he has the desire. God wants to do it. He has a desire to work miracles. Perhaps nothing is more frustrating than to desperately need something and to go to someone who has the capacity to meet your need, but there as my, uh, my mother used to say, mean for no reason. I think we all know people like that. My father said something one time, 
And I never looked at it that way. He said, well, anyone who is mean is mean for a reason. You don't always know what people have experienced that causes their disposition to be the way it is. But God desires to bless you. So not only does he have the capacity to give you a miracle, he has the necessary compassion to do so. Look at Matthew chapter 14 and verse 14. Capacity and compassion. Put that in the comment section for me at home if you will. Capacity and compassion. While you're getting Matthew 14 and 14, didn't Minister Kara James bless us on Thursday night? Amen. I was late to my seminar, being blessed by that word. It was tremendous. I know you had more to share, and I'm going to make sure you get time to do that. One of the greatest teachers in the kingdom of God. We're in Matthew 14 and 14, capacity and compassion. Read with me, saints. And Jesus went forth. And saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and was moved with compassion how not just for them you can have compassion for them but they can't receive any help until that compassion goes toward them he was moved with compassion toward them, an action word. And he healed their sick. It's important to know that while you may be joining us virtually in the midst of this corporate worship service, God can receive our worship corporately, but still see our needs individually. You are not a statistic. You are not just a number. What concerns you concerns God. Your need has not gone unrecognized by the eyes of an all-seeing God. The Holy Spirit knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows what you need. He knows how to provide those needs. But it may not happen the way you thought it would. I want to say to the Calvary and the Christ Church family as we're moving forward, when we come into the house of God to worship, we must agree to come with no other motive and no other expectation but to engage and encounter God. Say that with me, engage and encounter God. So then, if engagement is the prerequisite to the encounter, then your worship Hallelujah. is prerequisite to the manifestation of these miracles Hallelujah. that God is saying, I want to do. Yes. But I must be praised. I must be honored. I must be exalted. I cannot come in any service and present myself in the presence of God 
as a bystander or a spectator or a laissez-faire casual church member because I now understand that the encounter is determined by my engagement. It's not so much for me but towards those that God wants to manifest his compassion. We cannot be beholden to any kind of premeditated format. I was told it's the church controlled by the spirit. It was on all the stationery when I. Church controlled by the spirit. That doesn't mean that we condone chaos. Doesn't mean that God doesn't have a plan and God has an order. God has order. But the Holy Ghost also reserves the right of spontaneity. I, I was sharing with the, I got ready to preach in St. Louis, Missouri on Friday night. Dan, I had my Bible in my hand and got ready to approach the pulpit in these words. The Holy Ghost said, you better not. You know, the Holy Ghost speaks plain English. He did not say, thou beloved ecclesiastical bishop of the archpotency. <laughs> you bet not. See, God had already given a word to a, one of the senior bishops. He got up. He said one sentence, dad. And see, when you pray like that, you can do that. <laughs> when you have that kind of relationship, with God. God, Jesus preached a three-word sermon that conquered death, hell, and the grave. It is finished. He, one word, one sentence, and I sat in the pulpit and watched the yokes fall off the people. So we're not going to be beholden to any preconceived format because What's happening at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, Sister Candy, is really about what's going to happen at 10 a.m. on Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning. Thank you, Jesus. How can I effectively represent Jesus Christ in the workplace? That's the connection between 10 a.m. Sunday and 10 a.m. Monday. How can I bring kingdom principles into my vocation how do I bring the mind of God the wisdom of God the power of God the edge of God how do I bring that into an educational form into my recreational engagements so that when people see me they see the father and they see the exploits that the people of God are doing and it gives us an opportunity to witness to them that these things are accomplished by the power of God. Yeah. So Sunday the Spirit said expect something miraculous to happen to you through you or for you on this week. Yeah. But you have to be willing to allow God to work the miracle the way he chooses to do it and not the way you thought he would do it. That's hard for folk who know everything. What I'm talking about, mother, is difficult for type A personality. The, the operation of God in this manner is very difficult for control freaks. And some control freaks can be some of the most congenial people you ever meet. They will smile at you, they're cordial, they're kind, but at the end of the day, their way is going to be the only way. Namo <laughs> shekata. 
Help me say not the way I thought. There's not going to be much clarity preceding the miracle. It's going to be cloudy. It shall be a muddy miracle. You won't be able to see when. You may not know where. You might not know how. But you're just going to have to step by faith and follow each directive to the letter. No freestyle, no improvisation, just like God said. Second Kings chapter 5 and verse number 1. 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 1. There, I got a scripture in my mind. I thirst. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm extra thirsty because it's so hot. Can I? I'm going to tell Bishop Wagner, you said I could take my coat off. <laughs> Where's your jacket, son? I'm in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 1. 2 Kings 5 and 1. Read with me, please, here and at home. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him you know God can use pagan leaders to accomplish sovereign plans by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria read he was also a mighty man in valor what about this last part no matter how powerful you are no matter how accomplished you are, no matter how educated you are, no matter how capable you are, we are all vulnerable. This is the first principle of a muddy miracle. The admission of my vulnerability. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temptation, temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. We don't like to admit them. We don't like to talk about them openly, but we all have weaknesses. Well, half the, half the class told the truth. I said, we all have trepidations. We all have certain fears and certain vices we all have idiosyncrasies we all have mannerisms strange ways of thinking and doing things we all have a chink in our armor where you graduated from college doesn't prevent you from being a leper Making six or seven figures a year does not prevent you from being a leper. Shopping at Saks Fifth Avenues and Nordstrom's and driving a Bentley and a Mercedes does not prevent you from being a leper. Who you marry or who you divorce will not prevent you from being a leper. And Naaman was honorable. And Naaman was a man of valor. And Naaman was a man of victory. And Naaman was celebrated. But Naaman was a leper. Why, Pastor Tyson? Because all have sinned. 
and come short of the glory of God. The Bible describes that as weights. W-E-I-G-H-T-A's. And some of us feel like we're okay with God because we haven't sinned. But the scripture said lay aside every weight and the sin. All lepers. At the end of listing all of Naaman's achievements, accomplishments, commendations, and salutations, the scripture kind of cuts to the chase. Goes to the root of the problem, but he was a leper. Friend, you have to be willing to admit who you are before the Holy Spirit can begin the process of transforming you into who God says you are. Hallelujah. See, we're in a season now of self-identification where people are saying to God, I know you created me this way, but this is who I am. The creature attempting to dictate to the creator the terms of engagement. I, I ain't got to tell you, I'm, somebody has to tell you, it doesn't matter what they are saying at Princeton, Harvard, on, Yale, you will never be a cat. I just... You can go around barking all day long. You'll never be a dog. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of destiny. You are created in the image and the likeness of God Almighty. I want everyone here and at home to say with me, I am who God says I am. Say it with conviction. I can do what God says I can do. Say, I will be who God says I will be. Say, I will have what God says I can have. And this is the part I love the most. I will give what God says I can give. Verse number two. Verse two. Second Kings five, verse two. Read with me, please, aloud. And the Syrians had gone out by companies. Uh huh. This verse is fascinating to me because human nature has not changed. The verse says the Syrians had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. The little maid that they thought to enslave. The little maid had the key Hallelujah. to the miracle yes. of Syria's top five general naming. I want to say to all of the little maids, don't worry about people trying to minimize and marginalize you. Because the same people that have tried to keep you enslaved are the same people that are going to have to come to you to get the key to their freedom. Oh, I wish you'd tell your neighbor, be careful who you call little. Little maid. Whew. Big things come in small packages. You better know who you're dealing with. Verse number three. Read with me, please. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were the prophet that is in. Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria? Exclamation mark. Look at the compassion she had for her captor. 
for if he could get in contact with the man of God, he would recover him of his leprosy. It was possibly and probably Naaman that had led the company of Syrian soldiers that had gone down into Israel and brought this girl back into Syria as a slave. But she still wanted him to be healed. She still wanted him to be blessed. She still wanted him to live long and prosper. When you are a child of God, you have to learn how to help people who have tried to hurt you. You have to learn how to speak well of people who have tried to ruin your reputation. You have to learn to do good. I'm talking about muddy miracles. Do good to people who have despitefully used you. How to love your enemies. How to pray people alive that are praying for you to die. The second principle of a muddy miracle is this. When you need a big miracle, be sure not to overlook the little people. When you need a big miracle, be sure not to overlook the little people. The little maid. Let me ask you a question, class, and you at home. Who is it in your space pushing a mop bucket? Who is it in your space carrying a trash can? Who is it in your space washing a window, serving a meal, washing a dish that you do not perceive to have the capacity to give you the cure to your leprosy? The little maid, Lauren, didn't have the most education. But she had the greatest revelation concerning how Naaman could be healed. Some of us are trying to get our leprosy cured talking to smart people. But you need to take your counsel with spiritual people. And I'm going to give you watching at home this nugget for free. It is impossible for a person to have the mind of God that does not pray. I don't care what their title is. I'd rather have me an intercessor with no title than I would an apostle, bishop, pastor, teacher, evangelist that has a title but has no power. I feel like the Holy Ghost wants me to tell you to stop fo following these blind guides. Jesus. Blind guides trying to lead you out of their head. And not from the place of the heart of God. When you need a miracle, a muddy one, what you need is a word from the Lord, the little maid. And that word may not come from who you thought it was going to come from. I have sat in services and knew God was speaking directly to a person, but they couldn't receive it because it wasn't who they thought should be preaching or teaching. And they missed their miracle because it came from a little maid. Verse number four, second King chapter five and verse number four. Read please. And one went in and told his Lord saying, Verse five please. And the king of Syria said, go to. Go, and I will send the letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. 
And this is the third principle of a money miracle. You cannot buy a miracle. You can't buy it. You have to believe for it. I'm disturbed when ministers attach a dollar value to a blessing. You can't buy this. Verse number six, read. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, come on. Now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Verse seven. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Read on. Wherefore consider. I am going to give the man credit for recognizing his own limitations. Some people don't know how to do that. They feel as though because they are in a position of power that they inherently have all the answers. Not so. Muddy miracles do not come by the hand of man. They come from the mouth of God. So I don't care who you run to trying to get your word, get your answer, get what you think is your next step and your next direction, you're not going to get it from a man. It's got to come from the mouth of God. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Help me say every word. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Since this pandemic began, began, God has been speaking to Calvary every day. Prior to the pandemic, we didn't have 5 a.m. prayer online every day. We didn't have Thursday night prayer before the pandemic. During the pandemic, I started teaching Bible class every day. I was the only pastor around here. I knew that was teaching Bible class every day. But the Lord told me, I need you to speak my word every day. If you do not make your ear available to hear every proceeding word, and then if you do not act upon that proceeding word in a time-sensitive manner, the pieces of your puzzle will never fit together because you have too many missing pieces. And it's not that God wasn't speaking the question is, was, was your ear present to hear? Some of you are missing too many Bible classes. You're missing too many Sunday school classes. And now because you have ceased from those disciplines, now you're missing prayer. And now you've gotten into a situation, many saints, where they are biweekly. I was sitting in the pool bed on Sunday morning. Where's so and so? Where's so? Where is so and so? Here one week, not here the next. Too many missing pieces to your puzzle. Since when did mature saints start coming to church every other week? Have mercy. You'll never get delivered until you get disciplined. Amen, church. Amen. So because you're missing so much word, you're stuck where you were because you're still trying to do what God said last time and missing the instructions concerning what God is saying do this time. Give us this day our daily bread. Holy Ghost is speaking every day. Every single day. But you have to have an ear to hear. Too many voices the Holy Ghost said. Holy Ghost said too many voices. Plural. When God puts you. In a spiritual house. And has set a shepherd over that house. 
You don't have four, five, eight, nine, ten pastors. You only have one. All of you that call yourself members of this church only going to be one guy standing before God giving an answer for your soul. One. And the Holy Ghost is saying too many voices. See, now one thing you got to know about me is that I'm never going to tell you anything that's going to lead you wrong. I'm not perfect, but I don't lie on God. And see, some of you have connected yourself to people that will lie on God to pull your heartstrings because they're really after your purse string. I'm in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 8. What they really want is your money. If you don't ever pay tithes again until the rapture come, I'm going to still tell you, thus saith the Lord. Second yes. Kings chapter 5 and verse number 8. Read, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy cloak? Question mark. Read, let him come now to me. And he shall know that there is a prophet. Verse number nine, read. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood. Everybody tell Elder Gilchrist, thank you for being in Bible class. Because I don't know how in heaven, earth, or under the earth, you're going to teach a Bible class and never come to Bible class. I'm going to read verse 10 now. Verse 10 now, read, and Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Holy, God is wonder. Thank you, Jesus. Pause here and thank God for a cleansing flow that just hit your soul. There is therefore now no condemnation. Thank you for a clean heart. Thank you for clean hands. And thank you for a clean slate. And thou shalt be clean. Lord, I thank you. See, that's one thing about Calvary. You don't never know when the Holy Ghost is going to come in. And a wave of the blood just hit the room. I thank you for it. Thou shalt be clean. Verse number 11. Read with me. But Naaman was, he was mad, angry, upset, had an attitude. And went away and said, behold, what are the next two words? There it is. There's the whole problem. I thought he will surely come out to me, read with me, and stand and call on Moshata on the name of Siabalabokushete, his God, and strike his hand over the place. Oh, I wish you'd just look at somebody and tell them God don't need to put on no show. Thank you. Thank you. God don't need to put on no show. No. Some of you are looking for a show. Jesus. Some theatrical Broadway performance. But if my Bible is correct. They. The little maids. Shall lay hands on the sick. I wish you could see it. And they shall recover. You need to look at your neighbor and tell them. You bet not let me touch you. Because if I do. You're going to get healed. You better make sure I don't touch you. Because if I touch you, you will be healed. You don't have, you don't believe it. You don't believe it. I don't feel your faith in the room. Lift your hands up and say, according to the word of God, which I believe, when I touch them, 
they shall be healed. Shall be healed. Now praise God like there's healing in your hands. God's going to use some of you to heal your own doctors. I see that just like I'm looking at you, Dad. You're going to go to the doctor. Good morning, doctor. Boom, God's going to heal you. Naaman had the whole show. I'm over my time. Five minutes. Naaman had the whole show planned out in his head about how Elisha, not God, I thought you, I thought you were going to lay your hands on me. He had the whole thing planned out in his mind. God does not need a formula to heal you. All he needs is your faith. According to your faith. Holy, holy, holy. So be we'll see amana. According to your faith, so be it unto you. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Farfar rivers of Damascus? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was afraid to read those words too. <laughs> the whole class went mute on me. Because we weren't sure how to pronounce those words. Y'all just, just left me out there by myself. He'll figure it out. Abana, Far Par, rivers of Damascus. Aren't they all better than all the waters of Israel? Read. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned. <laughs> Here's the fifth principle of a muddy miracle. Pride will make you miss your breakthrough and your blessing. When you need a muddy miracle, you have to eliminate all vestiges of pride from your spirit completely. You've got to come to God with the mindset that says, any way you bless me. I'll be satisfied. Here's the sixth principle of a muddy miracle. God rarely works according to our preconceived notions. Very rarely. God rarely works according to our preconceived notions. Hey, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> As we move forward, probably the most important thing will be knowing what you don't know. That's going to be very important for a highly biblically literate church to know what you don't know. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost, as J. Laverne Tyson would say. I'm in verse number 13, 2 Kings 5 and 13. Read, and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not? Read. See, your problem is you want everybody to respect you, but you don't want to respect nobody. Somebody said to me, well, I, I, I couldn't believe they really had the nerve to ask me. They said, why you call uh, Elder Smith and Elder Brogdon and Elder Barbour boy dad? Why you call them Father, I said, because God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. You can be the pastor.
pastor, but there are still other fathers in the ministry. And that's what's wrong with some of you young preachers. You 13 and a half years old and think you know everything. 13 and a half. He's not even a whole 14. He's a half a 13. Mr. James E. Tyson said, he's going to come and try to tell the bishop how to pastor God's people, and you haven't pastored a chicken or a shack. Now, what does that spell? And he'd make you say it, chicken shack. That's right. You haven't pastored a chicken shack. You may now be dismissed. <laughs> and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, my father, you can never go wrong respecting your elders. Amen. Come on, grandparents, say amen to that. Amen. My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean. Help me say simple obedience will produce significant results put it in the comment section simple obedience will produce significant results sister michelle god bless you thank you for teaching us humility that little maid has big power with god See, humility will save your life. And pride will cost you your life, literally. Let me close on verse 14. I'm so glad you came to Bible class today. I apologize for being so hot down here. I promise you, I'm going to get with the deacons and try to do something for you by next Tuesday. I need a muddy miracle. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do something. All right, 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 14. Read. Then went he down. What did he do? According to what? It's not coming from the hand of man. It's coming from the mouth of God. According to the saying of the man of God. And what happened? And his flesh came again. Like unto the flesh. Here are the eighth and the ninth principles of a muddy miracle. God rewards complete obedience. And rejects partial obedience. God rewards complete obedience. And rejects. Partial. What is that I hear? Is that the bleeding of sheep? Saul? Come on, come on. God rewards complete obedience and rejects partial obedience. And I want to leave you with this at home tonight. Number nine. God works with faith even if it's imperfect. God will take the little faith you have. He will increase that faith if you just take one step of obedience at a time. And if you take the one step, it won't be long before you're able to look back and say, look where he brought me from. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Friend, if you are in need of something that is beyond the realm of just a blessing, I want to introduce you to the miracle worker. His name is Jesus Christ. And if you call that number on the screen, 330-747-4445, a minister will be happy to, to, to speak with you, to pray with you, to walk you through the scriptures 
and show you the many miracles that Jesus Christ wrought during the days of his flesh. But those miracles didn't end with the end of the New Testament. They continue unto this day. And we would like to agree with you in prayer that whatever it is that you need from the Lord, God will do it for you. I'm sitting, standing right now in a room full of miracles. They can't see your face, saints, but let them hear your praise. Come on, let's stand to our feet, Lord God, hallelujah. And lift your hands and lift your voice and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it with me, Lord Jesus. I receive the miracles, signs, and wonders this day, June 27th, 2023. Now give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're here and you have not been water baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, we want you to come down. We want to pray for you. Hallelujah. We want to pray for you. you. Glory to God. Are you here? If you want prayer for yourself and for your family, the altar is open right now. How many of you want to be a blessing to your family? I was reading the scripture today, and it tells us, be not afraid. The Lord will fight for you. And you are to fight for your brethren, for your sons, for your daughters, Hallelujah. For your wives and for your houses. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we have to put things in order. One, two, three. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody stand with me and lift your hand toward this child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord. the name of Jesus, according to your will, Lord God, allow your will to be performed in their lives. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, bless them not to fear, for you are their shield and their exceeding great reward. Now bless them and reward them openly for coming to the altar now. We bless you and we praise you. Glorify you. Angels of the Lord Jesus Christ, get with them. And whatever their request is, let it be. In Jesus Christ's name, give them clean hearts, spirits, souls, and bodies. Preserve them blameless until the coming of the Lord. This we ask and declare and decree the same. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else that want prayer? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We're going to leave it with you. God bless you. I'm here, Lord. I, I used to tell the Lord when we would have altar call uh, years ago, and Bishop would be there pleading for people to come to the altar. I would say, Lord, I'm here. <laughs> yes, Lord. God bless you. Uh, uh, we're going to leave it now. We're off the air. We're not off the air. Well, prepare your offering today with miracle signs and wonders in mind. So send your offering to your home church or send it here to Mount Calvary. It will be planted in good ground. I promise you. Amen and amen. Again, uh, they have already given the announcement. Nathan will be speaking tonight at the hollow ground, campground. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm thinking I'm going to Cleveland, but so pray for me. I had planned to come at one time, but I, there's something else came up that I'm trying to help a saint with. But let's be faithful to the house of God and tell somebody, come to Bible class. 
be at church before 10. Hallelujah. Well, we can be in the prayer and the praise. Lord God Almighty, God is so good. Mm. Is there, where's Sister Brogdon? Is there any other announcements that should be made? That's it. Are we all goodbye? Have a good day. Bless you. Pray your blessings of God upon everybody. Okay, let's stand. Uh, li lift your hand in a tithing envelope. And don't forget to pay your tithes and offering. Glory to God. Amen, amen. That you have called us here today. Bless and cover our pastor. Restore strength unto him and his wife and his children, his, his son and his daughter-in-law and the baby that is in her womb. Let it come forth healthy, intelligent, and good-looking with no impediments. We bless you now. Go with us now. Keep us under the blood of Jesus Christ. We humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and we're looking for miracles signs and wonders with our uplifted hands in Jesus Christ's name we pray amen and amen